question. The Lord Bishop of Sheffield. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. We are absolutely committed to improving transport infrastructure across the north of England. The Chancellor announced in the autumn statement on 30 October a range of funding to support transport, including funding for the development of the West Yorkshire Mass Transit, renewal of the Super Tram in Sheffield and the Trans Pennine route upgrade. This includes an uplift to National City Region Sustainable Transport <coughs> Settlement funding in 2025-26 of £200 million for mayoral combined authorities. I thank the Noble Lord the Minister for that answer. Uh, I applaud the progress that the City of Doncaster Council and the South Yorkshire Mayoral Combined Authority have made to reopen Doncaster Sheffield Airport after its closure in 2022, and I was encouraged by the Chancellor's reference to Sheffield's excellent super tram in her recent budget statement. But may I ask the Noble Lord the Minister what steps the Government will be taking to promote the fuller, greener integration of regional aviation, tram, bus and rail networks? <coughs> Primarily that sort of integration at a mayoral combined authority level is the job of the mayoral combined authority. But what I would say is that the government supporting those mayoral combined authorities to have the right transport plans, which include integration across the various modes, is, is absolutely the right thing to do. And that's, that's the reason for the funding, and it's the reason for the uplift in the funding. My Lord, uh, could I support the uh, Right Reverend Bishop of Sheffield in his question and uh, ask that every support should be given for, by the Department of Transport to ensuring that the city region, which is the only metropolitan urban area in the country not to have an airport, should have the benefits both of productivity and of growth that flow from it. But perhaps he could also encourage the developers not to call it the Robin Hood Airport, which it was previously, <laughs> on the grounds that when people got off, the arrows that they saw seemed to lead them to the Friar Took uh, cafeteria uh, and their Maid Marian facilities. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm amazed to think that the, uh, the name of a cafeteria in a regional airport might be something to do with the department. More, more seriously, um, the, uh, the South Yorkshire Mayoral Combined Authority Board, chaired by the Mayor, will make a decision later this month on providing the City of Don Doncaster Council with £3 million as part of Doncaster's existing £138 million gain share from the South Yorkshire Metropolitan Combined Authority allocation, and that is the government supporting uh, the reinstatement of this airport, and it will do everything possible uh, to uh, help the airport get back into business and contribute to the economic growth of the region. Um, the um, the tra Trans Pennine Express, owned by the government, Network Rail, owned by the government, after three years, businesses and individuals are fed up with excuses and meaningless explanations. So when will the direct train service between Sheffield and its major international airport, Manchester, be reinstated? Yeah. The direct service was curtailed as part of uh, a very complex uh, and necessary scheme to restore railway reliability in Manchester. Uh, the Department knows, and I know, that there is a, a, a huge aspiration for a direct connection between Sheffield and Manchester Airport, but the configuration of the railway in Manchester means it is very difficult to, uh, to, to deliver it. Um, one of the reasons, of course, for the region being keen on Doncaster Airport is to see flights from the region without necessarily going to Manchester. Thank, thank you. My Lords, as President of the British Chambers of Commerce, I've spent many happy days in Doncaster and I can attest to how delighted local businesses are at the reopening of the airport. But can I ask the Government how it is thinking of addressing the very substantial digital infrastructure gaps across the north of England? Cumbria and Northumberland face some of the most terrifying black knot spots and it's something we hear from businesses increasingly. If we are going to grow the economy, we need to grow the digital infrastructure as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I've no doubt that digital infrastructure across the whole of uh, England is, is very necessary. I don't have any information of that to hand, but I will, of course, write to the noble Baroness with as much information as I can muster about it. My Lord. Everyone acknowledges that regional airports throughout the country are struggling. Um, how does the government think that putting up air passenger duty is going to help this? Air passenger duty hasn't changed for a short, uh, 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 a considerable length of time. So increasing it uh, at this time, my recollection is that it's no, uh, it's it's no more than uh, inflation would have been, and actually uh, on the total cost of airfares, it's a relatively small amount. My Lord, following the excellent questions uh, from the Right Reverend Prelate and my noble friend Lord Blunkett. Will the noble minister join me in congratulating Mayor Ros Jones for the part that she has played in the reopening of the airport? And will he support her request to, to, to her, from her to the department and to the Civil Asia Aviation Authority to allow the necessary airspace once an operator for Doncaster Sheffield Airport is announced? I will, of course, join congratulations to Mayor Ros Jones, and the reopening of the airport is clearly very important locally and regionally. I am able to say that the department will support, as much as it can, the uh, reinstatement of the airspace air uh, and the air traffic control needed to make the airport operational. Doesn't the government recognise? My Lords, why doesn't the government recognise the links between the city of Newcastle-upon-Tyne and Edinburgh require an upgraded and safe A1, and that effective rail transport to northern cities from Newcastle depends on investment in the capacity of the East Coast Main Line? The Government was faced, when it was elected, with, a, with an unachievable list of uh, infrastructure uh, promises from the previous Government. And uh, various schemes have not been able to be taken forward simply because there isn't the money to achieve them, um, of which the A1 is, is one. The East Coast Main Line has had a considerable amount of investment. Uh, the struggle has been recently to achieve a railway timetable because of the fragmentation of the railway to take advantage of the four billion that was spent on it. I am hoping that we've got there, but that is, of course, one of the reasons for rail reform which is that we shouldn't be investing £4 billion on a railway, only to find we can't construct a timetable to take advantage of the, of the investment. And only suitable for, for the smallest aeroplanes. I don't have information about the length of the runway, I'm afraid. Um, I'm sure... I'm, I'm sure that the proposition to reopen the airport is, takes into account its existing configuration and I'm sure that the uh, public bodies concerned in it are confident that the airport, with whatever length of runway it has, would, can support the local economy with the appropriate air services. My Lords, Manchester Airport is planning for an expansion of 150% in passenger numbers. Stan said 28 million passengers to 43 million passengers. Leeds Bradford Airport has been looking for a 75% increase in passenger numbers. Yet in July, the Committee on Climate Change told the government that it must stop airport expansion quote, without a UK-wide capacity management framework. Um, is this not just more public money going into what have to be white elephants, both in terms of demand and, crucially, our need to cut our climate emissions, particularly in terms of the promise Sir Keir Starmer just made at COP29? In relation to regional airports, there is a pressing demand from business to actually improve uh, economic growth in those, uh, in those cities and regions. By, by better and more convenient connectivity. The extent to which it, that means more flights is, 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 a, is, a, is a separate question, but the, but the support given to an airport like Doncaster in order to make uh, business better and, eco and create economic growth in, in that region is, of course, something which is entirely consistent with the government's objectives. I see that plans for a 
third runway at Heathrow have come to the surface again. Does the uh, noble lord, the minister, accept that allowing this, uh, this uh, plan to develop and to catch the headlines again will inevitably undermine the viability and investment opportunities for airports in the north of England in general? My understanding of the, uh, the recent suggestions about growth at Heathrow are that they are not currently uh, focused on a third runway, but an expansion of the airport in order to cope with more passengers on the existing runways. Um, there is, of course, a debate about the extent to which uh, air flights from Heathrow compete with regional airports, but actually Heathrow is, of course, an international hub and many of the flights that uh, Heathrow might aspire to handle will never go to regional airports. The, the, there, are, there are criteria that will have to be fulfilled for an expansion of Heathrow, but I don't think we necessarily see that that will compete with the regional airports such as Doncaster that we've been discussing this afternoon. My Lords, that concludes oral questions for today.